Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us here on our YouTube channel for episode number 905. Well, hey, we get to talk family farming in today's episode. Really, you know, there's so much about how we used to farm and how families used to be 100% involved and how it was almost exclusively a family operation except for those times of year when we needed more help. And we get to revisit that today. I'm going to be speaking with Whitney Urena coming to us from Laclede County High School, their FFA chapter, talking all about her family's dairy that she is growing up on and that they moved from Maryland to Missouri uh, in 2001 and how it's the entire family working on the dairy and how they've got plans for the future. She and her mom want to start a business related to the specific cows they are milking and do some value adding. It's a really, really heartwarming story to hear about it, and we're going to get it started for you right now. Joining me today is Whitney Urena, and she is coming to us from Laclede County High School FFA chapter, again in Conway, Missouri, serving as her chapter's secretary, and we're going to be talking all about dairy today on the show. So Whitney, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, you bet. I am glad to speak with you, and Man, I, I like the uh, I like the Zoom video. I'm getting. Is this the outside of your high school ag shop or something like that? Yes, it is. Uh, it looks like it's a beautiful day in Missouri. And blue skies. It is very warm. <laughs> very warm. <laughs> well, I I am jealous. I'm out here in the West, and uh, we have had a blanket of smoke for about three weeks now, and so those blue skies look really really nice. I would take it. No question yeah. about it. <laughs> All right. Well, I am glad to have you on the show. Glad you could you could bust out of class really quick to do this interview. Let's talk about you. So do you live in town or out on a farm or a dairy or somewhere in the middle? Um, I live out of town about 15 minutes on my family's dairy farm. Um, my grandfather moved the farm out here in uh, 01, I believe. Okay. In 2001? So, yep. Okay. Where from? Uh, we're from Maryland. From Maryland. Interesting. And so was your grandfather involved in the dairy business in Maryland? Uh, yes, he was. He was. That's, that's where the farm originated from. Okay. You don't know how jealous I am of you right now that uh, you can say you moved out here. The family moved out here in 2001 and you weren't even born yet. I was not. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is crazy. I remember 2001 like the back of my hand. Wow. Okay. So from Maryland, you know, that's so interesting. I grew up in California and I'm still in touch with a lot of people in agriculture in California and a lot of people in the dairy industry in California. And whenever you hear about dairies moving, it always seems like it's dairies moving from California, but coming from the opposite coast, uh, that's a new thing. Do you, do you know the family history and, and why they made the move from Maryland to Missouri? Um, I think it was just uh, prices and regulations. They just wanted a change, and Missouri had what they were looking for. How interesting! I've never, I've never thought of Missouri as a dairy state, and maybe it's not still. Uh, do you do you know? Is there a lot of dairy industry there? Is it growing? Um, I guess it kind of depends on who you ask or where you go. I know there's several dairy farms around us if you keep going down our little back roads, but there's several dairy farms around us in town, um, surrounding counties. Yeah, that so is interesting. I had a, I had another young lady on the show a couple weeks back and her family had moved their dairy to Tennessee, and I never thought of Tennessee as a, as a dairy state. So uh, it's been interesting to see the migration of dairies around the country. What kind of cattle are you all milking? Uh, we milk registered Guernseys, and I have two registered Holsteins. Okay, so Guernseys, and then you're breaking the tradition here. You've got registered Holsteins. Well, <laughs> my uh, grandmother gave me the Holsteins. That's okay. what That's what they originally milked. Okay way back when <laughs> and uh, then my grandfather wanted to change so he made the change to Guernsey's. Okay that's interesting well we'll circle back around to that. Well, let me ask you about the FFA. So how long All have right. you been involved in the FFA now? Um, well since I was a freshman I was uh, enrolled in FFA you know that's kind of how that goes but 
I've kind of been doing stuff adding up for um, or becoming FFA uh, when I was in seventh grade. Okay. So I took ag-, ag classes here in high school. Gotcha. Okay, so you are a junior now, correct? Correct. Okay. And so going back to seventh grade, you were able to take ag classes with high school students. Is that what you're you're telling me? Not exactly. We so our um, junior high is connected to our high school. So um, our junior high ag classes were based out of the same shop, but not the the same. I guess the high schoolers. That's okay. So it's all junior hires, but okay. So it was we a, all go out of the same classroom. Okay, I've got it. So it was a middle school class. <laughs> In the high school ag department, basically. Basically, yes. Okay. So did you know all the way back then that you wanted to be an FFA member? Um, I guess in elementary school, I really wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. But mm-hmm. in junior high, I think that was definitely something that I wanted to do. Like, this is just what I'm driven to do. Like, this is for me. Do you remember what those reasons were? Um, I think it was just because a lot of my friends um, here at school, they don't um, do a lot of the same things that I do. So I really broke the mold in my friend group and I really appreciated having a group of people who had the same views as I did on agriculture. Got it. So that's interesting because it's not like you're from outside of agriculture. You grew up in it and in dairy farming, but you grew up with a lot of friends who were not involved in agriculture. Um, yes and no, because when I uh, go to cattle shows, Mm -hmm. that's also where a lot of my friends are, people I've grown up with, showing with over the years. Okay. Okay. Interesting. But you found a group that you were like, these these folks, when it, when it comes to the stuff that's kind of center in my life, agriculture, these folks in FFA, they understand it. I can talk to them and, and they get it. Yes, that's okay. that's what really drove me to FFA, I think, is having a, a group of individuals who understood what I was doing. Gotcha. Okay. Now, you you are serving as your chapter secretary, so you've, you've become engaged in the officer team. Why did you want to take that step? Um, I think that's just uh, something that would help me um, in the long run, as well as just um, having a position as a leader in my chapter. So I like being able to help um, the underclassmen, the green hands and uh, chapter degree recipients who don't quite know where they're going, Mm -hmm. but I like to be able to just help them. Okay, great. Well, let's do this. Um, I would love to acknowledge your FFA advisors. Who are those for you there at LaCleed? That would be uh, Marianne Keck and Joseph Stratton. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. I'm going to take a quick moment, Whitney, to acknowledge a couple of our great sponsors and everybody. You know who it is already. I love to talk about lacrosse footwear, especially when we do our FFA episodes because they are so proud to support the FFA by annually sponsoring $25,000 in scholarships and jackets as part of the Give the Gift of Blue program. And of course, we use lacrosse boots here on our farm in Idaho every single day. I use the Alpha Range boots whether I'm irrigating, feeding, no matter what time of year it is, I'm using them to work out in the field. We want you to do the same. You can check out everything they've got to offer you over at lacrossefootwear.com. And then of course, Powder River Livestock Handling Equipment. The finest in large livestock handling equipment. If you've got cattle, you've got a run in, you've got a treat, nobody develops equipment uh, more intuitively for working cattle than Powder River. And that's precisely because they've been developed out here in the West for over 80 years with cattle coming in off of rangelands, cattle that are very, very difficult to handle. And they've been helping ranchers out here get the job done for that long. They can certainly help you as well. Let your local farm and ranch retailer know you want to see that Powder River Green out in their sales yard. So you can also have the finest in livestock handling equipment. And you can check them out at powderriver.com. All right. Well, Whitney, we have already alluded to the fact that your supervised agricultural experience is going to be in dairy. But can you tell us what that consists of? So... 
basically what my job is at our farm. I feed all of the young stock. So I um, take care of our bottle calves, our bucket calves. I feed grain to all of our um, different age groups of heifers going up to yearlings. Um, occasionally I assist in the parlor when I'm needed because uh, we do have some farm help from time to time. So when the farm help is not there, I'll assist my mom in the barn. And I also um, show. I'm very passionate about showing cows. Okay. And are you showing those two Holsteins that your, was it your grandmother or your great grandmother gave to you? My grandmother, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I plan on showing them at our state Holstein show next month. Okay. Very cool. Well, good for you. So how often do you find yourself out in the show ring? So during the summer, um, during July, typically, we have about uh, three or four shows that I go to, uh, two being county fairs. Um, one is our um, um, Ozark Empire Fair. So a lot of people from around the district or even through the state, they really like going there. And state fair is in August. Okay. So you've got quite a few shows under your belt during the summer. Yep, and then the fall is when my national shows go on. So Very cool. And have you competed in nationals before? I have. I have been showing at the national shows since 2014. That's great. Good for you. Wow, 2014. So you've been doing it since you were young. And oh yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And how how have you done? Have you had some success? Oh, I've had some pretty good successes in the past. Um, the first two years I started out at uh, World Dairy Expo, I um, was awarded with Reserve Grand Champion Guernsey of the Junior Show. And that that was just the highlight of those two years. That was amazing for me. That is great. Good for you. That is exciting. Well, so tell me more about your family's dairy. It sounds like it's it's pretty much exclusively a family-run operation. Am I hearing that correctly? It is. Um, it's just my mom and her father and I at the farm. And my uncle, um, he's also based out of Conway. Uh, he has his own separate farm with my aunt and their um, son, Diesel. Gotcha. And is, are they dairy farmers as well? They are. Um, okay. They milk Ayrshire's, Brown Swiss, Guernsey's, and Holstein's. Okay, interesting. Now, there was this transition at one point from Holstein's to Guernsey's in your family, in your family's dairy farm. Was there a reason for that? Does it have to do with uh, the consistency of the, of the milk, or did they, did you did your family stop selling uh, milk for milk purposes and now for cheese or something like that? Is there some history to that? Um, I think it was more for the protein side of mm -hmm. the milk because Guernsey's have a higher protein count than Holstein's do, so their milk is more fatty as well. Um, but my grandfather, just he really saw something in the Guernsey's, and mm -hmm. so he bought some. Okay. So they started to make that transition That's, into Guernsey's. That is really cool. So... Uh, Doing it as a family, to me, you know, where I grew up, we have such large dairies, um, and they're family-owned, don't get me wrong, but um, they have a lot of staff, a lot of employees, and uh, really, they have a large number of cows. So the way you're doing it, uh, it sounds very nice. How You're talking about feeding the calves and feeding the heifers. Um, are you guys completely 100% feedlot-based, or do you run some of your dairy cattle out on pasture as well? Um, all of our dairy cows are run on pasture. We practice intensive grazing, okay. so our um, milk cows will rotate between different pastures mm -hmm. uh, according to um, what what the grass is doing in certain fields, where they need to go that is, uh, for the wheat. Okay. So. Yeah, that is very interesting. So, uh, so you're not just learning about the dairy side necessarily, but you're also learning about pasture management, forage management, and growth and things like that. Yeah. That is yep. great. Well, now, how does this, uh, I, I guess, you know, here you are, you've just begun your junior year, so no pressure on this question. Um, but as you look forward, you'll finish high school in about uh, a year and a half. 
And does this kind of frame what you want to do in the future? Do you have any idea what you'd like to pursue, at least for right now? I want to go into agribusiness. Um, my mother and I have shared this dream for several years now where we want to start um, kind of more like a bottling company, um, just focused around the Guernsey A2A2 products. So we want to sell raw milk, uh, make cheese out of the Guernsey milk, um, ice cream, just, you know, all Guernsey-based products, dairy products. Wow. So that's, I want to go into agribusiness so I can learn more about how to shape a business like that. That is very cool. So you want to do some value adding with the, uh, the commodities you're already producing on your farm. Yeah. That is awesome. So ice cream, milk, cheese... And then when you talk about bottling, are you talking about, so you're talking about not just selling direct off of your farm, but bottling distribution? Um, I think we would just sell like out of the, um, we, we wanted to buy some sort of business off the highway. So then it would be easy, mm -hmm. accessible to anyone who is traveling. So gotcha. Well, that's a wonderful idea. I'd be excited to come and, and shop at your store when you get that going. Have you already have you dreamed up a name for it already? Um, I'm sure my mom has. I <laughs> I really I really don't know. Well, let's talk about uh, and and I'll uh, I'll kind of wrap with this question. But uh, it's very to me what you're doing in the family history and then all the family working together. Tell me about that. Is it uh, because we don't see it as much as we once did? But here you are. You're working with three generations on your farm. You've got your, I think you said your uncle's farm, uh, which is locally as well. You all work together, and then you and your mom are planning for this future farm and dairy business going forward. You're going to go study in college for that. What does it What does it mean to you to be able to uh, look forward and see your working life uh, surrounded by your family and to do something that is so family centric? Um, it's just, uh, I grew up with a large family, so I always had family members around me and seeing a future without being near to my family just seems kind of pointless to me because it's the only way I know how to function. It's, they're the people I've been exposed to, they're the people who I work with from day to day basis. It's, they're the people I want to work with. <laughs> Well, that's great, and, and how wonderful that you have that opportunity, Whitney. I have really enjoyed kind of visualizing what you're doing there in Missouri and, and getting to know more about the story. A really fascinating story. Thank you so much for coming on and joining me today. Thank you for having me. Well, special thanks to Whitney Arena for coming on the Off-Farm Income Podcast Day. Thank you very much to all of you for being here, and as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.